reasons to buy gold and silver are extremely important. So number one, I would suggest and submit that most advisors don't even really know the reasons. Yeah, they see inflation and they understand the correlation there. But the real reason to de-dollarize and to own precious metals is far deeper. And to me, it's centered specifically around the loss of the petro status. I guess one more question uh, along a similar vein is uh, people wondering why their traditional financial planner is not recommending to them to buy uh, gold and silver. I had a couple of clients reach out to me in the last week, ask me for any documentation that I could help them to provide to their financial planner or the or the uh, fiduciary who's in charge of uh, inheritance that they're, that they're uh, under, that sort of thing to help them understand why this is a prudent thing to do for anyone who's managing money. Uh, we certainly have interviewed Michael Pento, the founder of Pento Portfolio Strategies, and he has a model that looks forward to all kinds of different trends, uh, inflationary, deflationary, et cetera. And he's right now at the maximum of his variable, uh, typically five to 20%. He's at 20% that he's recommending to his clients to uh, be in gold, for example. Um, and there's also the Ibbotson study you've talked about before. Uh, we're getting more information on that. Uh, we put that, in fact, I was gonna mention to folks, if you email us at libertyandfinance.com and just uh, put uh, gold study in the uh, title of the email, we'll send you a, a link to where you can find out the Ibbotson study, which was done. And Andy, you can tell us more about that because you're the guy that informed me of that in the first place. But where can people get more information about <laughs> that their traditional financial planner is not telling them about why it's important to include gold in their portfolio? It's funny. You know, I'd ask them a question. I'd say, or her. Mr. and Mrs. Financial Advisor, do you, can you tell me what makes the dollar the world reserve currency? And if they can't answer that question, that's all you need to know. And it's funny, Dunnigan, I find lots of people don't know the answer to that question. And if you ask it, the answers you get range from fairly uh, astute to ridiculous. Um, and you know, the real answer is the protection of the Saudi kingdom and the dollar hegemony is granted to us by the fact that OPEC has always sold oil um, in U.S. dollars. But but that's ending right now. And with the agreements we've talked about already in place between Nigeria and China and, and Saudi and China and Russia and China. And now India has just uh, struck up a deal with Russia, uh, a rupee ruble exchange program for military. You are beginning to see the dollar lose its world reserve status, period. And that in and of itself, I believe, will be massive. You got uh, a lady named Loretta Mester, she's on the FOMC committee, and which is the Federal Open Market Committee, and, and she just got through saying it will take several years to get inflation under control. Um, you got you got the Fed coming out and and saying this that it's going to be years before we get things under control. The reasons to buy gold and silver are extremely important. So. Number one, I would suggest and submit that most advisors don't even really know the reasons. Yeah, they see inflation and they understand the correlation there. But the real reason to de-dollarize and to own precious metals is far deeper. And to me, it's centered specifically around the loss of the petro status. Fed Chairman Powell came out to a month and a half ago and publicly said there's room for more than one world reserve currency. He is acquiescing to the fact that we will be challenged for singular world reserve status. That in and of itself will create massive inflation as dollars come home and interest rates rise as a result, which will negatively impact stocks and bonds. And so when you look at a traditional 60, 40 percent allocation of stocks and bonds in people's portfolio, it's going to get negatively impacted. If your advisor can't answer that simple question right off the bat, you know you're asking the, per the wrong person this question. But the real reason is that when I was young in this industry, you know, they weren't called financial advisors. They were called stockbrokers, and they made a percentage of every trade. Uh, and so they didn't care what you were buying. They made a percentage if you bought and if you sold. And now... Uh, when the internet 
came around. I mean, I started Miles Franklin before email and internet. And so it was different. But when the internet came around and Scott Trade said, well, we'll do those trades for nine bucks, uh, the stockbroker became a dinosaur and they became a financial advisor, which is a test that's about a hundred questions on how or how not to screw somebody. That's really what it is. It's a test on ethics. And the series seven is a tough test to become an advisor, the, the, uh, to become uh, able to trade stocks. The test to become a, a, a financial advisor is very easy. Not a certified financial planner, the CFP, that's a, a three part, three year test. That's the real deal. But a financial advisor is what everyone is nowadays at Edward Jones and uh, at, at, at these shops that that you know people go into seeking advice for investments. So they're now an advisor. They're paid by keeping money under management. So you know if they're going to recommend precious metals, if they do have an inkling, it's going to be something like GLD or SLV or or. Uh, index funds that that index you know junior mining shares or stuff like that for them to recommend physical gold none of the none of the brokerages sell it so they're going to have to recommend that they take a portion of that money out from under the umbrella and send it to a company like ours or to a gentleman like you and that money's not coming back anytime soon and they know that so they have lost their ability to be impartial in other words, they learn more and more about less and less till they know everything about nothing and they refuse to be impartial because you're taking money out from the umbrella, which is off of their plate. This is exactly why they don't recommend it because let's just be honest, it's human nature to be self-serving if it means taking away from your, uh, your dinner plate. And that's really what is happening with most financial advisors. I don't want to paint a very broad brush stroke, but that's the truth of it. If they sold physical metal that could then be kept under management, I think there would be far greater impartiality and, and objectivity as it pertains to that. So, you know, you have to realize first and foremost that the money is yours. And most of us, it's interesting, I've talked to you about this before, about being accountable for your actions. And you are, we all are, in every way, yet most people give up that accountability, their retirement. The most important thing to be accountable for to somebody else, it's your money. And if you feel that it's something you should do, then do it. And if you're not sure, if your financial advisor um, understands the reasons to do it, ask them that question. What gives the dollar its world reserve status? And if they can't answer that question, you may want to double uh, think twice about who you're who you're getting your advice from, and especially as it pertains to finding anything that is opposite the dollar. Because if they can't answer that question and see what's happening, starting with the reclassification of gold as tier one and everything that's happened up until this point, culminating with the uh, Fed chairman saying there's room for more than one world reserve currency and countries now selling or buying oil in other currencies, particularly the yuan, um, then you're dealing with the wrong person. And, uh, and that's the, the truest answer I can give you, because if they're worth their salt, they will answer that question by saying, well, of course, it's the petrol status and the protection of the Saudi kingdom. At least at that point, you know you're dealing with someone who can have an intelligent conversation as to why he or she doesn't think you should own physical metal. Short of that, you're asking the wrong person the wrong question.